Taurus, singles, welcome. Super singles, completely singles, totally singles. This meet the soulmate read using the ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck today. Uh, this is for the end of November time frame, okay, guys? Um, this kind of always positive reading, I say, because uh, it only is asking who is the right one for you. I think there's a lot of soulmates. Um, so this is asking if you want to have soul alignment uh, with this, let's say, God or spirit, whatever you think, um, feels is the best uh, person for you. Um, that's the one we want to see here. I'm just asking to help me describe them to you. I typically look at aspects of personality, behavior, uh, lifestyle, um, core values, um, their love nature, and get a lot of astrology, so keep that in mind as we go along. And this is for Taurus, uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, I should say. Um, thank you for joining me. We're at the outdoor uh, urban studios of Cancun. <laughs> Uh, here where I live. Might there's a little construction going on nearby. Hopefully it won't bother us. Normally it's like so peaceful, so beautiful here. It's a blessing. So here um, we're going to use uh, eight cards and look at the emotional, intellectual, sexual love, and core value and lifestyle areas of your person. And I did pre shuffle. Wow, the sun. This is in the emotional position. It is auspicious there. Knight of Cups. Sun over the Knight of Cups. So, uh, and I should say too, uh, don't, if you see the Three of Swords, it's not, no one's breaking up. Uh, this is a little bit of a different read. So here we're looking at their emotional nature. I see the childhood here. I see a very good childhood. You know, they just would have been with parents. Uh, they're the type of person, probably their parents are still together celebrating their 30 40 50th anniversaries whatever um and um they just had i think like it's kind of i don't know why it's kind of getting me it's like it's rare isn't it <laughs> they had this kind of just good childhood with like solid parents that loved each other and uh, you know i don't know that i was gonna say i don't know if it was perfect but i don't know what the sun kind of implies it was perfect maybe their parents really you know i guess it it does happen huh <laughs> They really loved each other for like their whole lives and uh, uh, really set a great example. Uh, it, you know, when people are like this, they're not only just emotionally whole and everything, usually their lives are together. So this person had a oh, great childhood, you know, their needs were met, um, they are given the proper guidance. Um, with the Knight of Cups here, uh, we'll see what's on their intellectual here next to it. I kind of read conscious and unconscious. Um, you know, you would think the sun card's obvious, Leo, Moon, so I have to go with that. Um, and now I have known Leo Moons. Um, this is the kind of person that really will light up a room. Usually per people are very uh, favorably predisposed to this person. Um, it's a very positive moon, very bright moon. Uh, this is the kind of person that absolutely, I think especially with the Knight of Cups here moving in, they probably will not tolerate like negativity. Like even to the point like you, you, if they're watching Netflix or something, they're going to watch the, the uh, you know, zombie stuff or something horrible. Um, and they really probably don't like uh, even like uh, shadow work and discussions and any kind of dark things like that. Um, we really want to keep things positive and light, you know. Hermit energy. Got to be a Virgo sun. This is where I read the sun, and this is the intellectual position. Um, like I meant to mention in the other reading how uh, uh, you can't get much better than a Virgo Mercury for your for a good mind, but um, let's see here. Uh, Ten of Cups. You got the Hermit over the Ten of Cups in their intellectual position. Now I said I wanted to kind of see where this uh, knight was going, and he's going to the Ten of Cups. You know, this person. I told you, uh, the Sun and the Ten of Cups. Their parents were like, uh, like Morticia and fucking Gomez or something, man. That's what we're dealing with, and um, so um, put it the right way. So. Um, really just had this ridiculously good uh, childhood 
Um, they've got the Virgo Sun. Uh, it's uh, looking at the moon here, the Leo moon. Um, I get the feeling like this person might come across more like a Leo than a Virgo. And, but not the, the thing, the way the Virgo and the Leo is going to work with them. It's not necessarily a great match, right? But uh, the way they make it work is uh, the it kind of brings out the best parts of both like um it, the with the virgo sun they have kind of the humility um the sincerity the honesty that goes with that um and with the leo energy with the moon being a little different than the sun and i'm not saying all leos are obnoxious or anything at all but i'm saying any of that type of energy that goes with leo like look at me look at me and um, the theatricals, anything like that, that's not what gets emphasized. What gets emphasized is the lioness, the lion, um, the power of the sun uh, energy of, the, of life and the life force of uh, play in children is emphasized here. Um, and so that's why they're the kind of person that would light up a room. And they don't do it by like, uh, look at me they do it's the moon their light is being reflected the light of the sun is reflected off of them so it's like they would reflect back to others and so they'd be exactly that type of person when you get to know them get to meet them and this ten of cups I mean this is a super genuinely positive person like don't it, they might be so positive you'd be like are you like for real they're like for real they are like for real and I don't really read the bottom of the deck in this read at all Okay, so we're looking at the sexual love nature. God damn, he comes out again. My favorite card in this deck, the King of Cups. I call it the Jim Morrison King of Cups because it looks like Jim Morrison from the doors, guys. So, Taurus, congratulations. Um, very powerful. I think this is going to be a Cancer Venus energy with this person. Yes. You've got a Virgo with the Cancer Venus. It goes, man, with this uh, Ten of Cups and the Knight of Cups. I mean, this person's kind of uh, got really balanced energy. You know, you got this water energy with this earth and uh, this fire with the sun um, and Ace of Swords. So King of Cups over the Ace of Swords. Um, and this is in their love and sexual nature. The swords here, I'm going to read the uh, Mars energy for this Virgo, which I think it's Libra. So, you have quite a person here. I'm trying to think of the stories they would tell. Um, I see them being pretty well balanced, like in terms of relationships, like... I don't see them drawing in a lot of drama and bad relationships, uh, so I'm not sure what they might say there. Like my kind of question with a person like this is always like, I wonder why they're single, because you know I got the feeling like this type of person that probably is uh, gonna uh, bond for life, left up to them. That's what they've experienced in life, and it's deep in them with the Knight of Cups and the Ten of Swords and the intellectual in the emotional unconscious area of their mind um, they're just someone I think is very emotionally available and emotionally caring you know this Venus energy very strong and they might be very well placed somehow in their chart um, maybe it's in the first house and they're like a cancer rising or something um, but very very strong like that guys um, and I think they're just going to be, um, in terms of the Ace of Swords, I think for a Libra, they're going to be kind of uh, dominant sexually. A lot of people forget that, you know, air is masculine energy. Um, so, um, but it goes very well with the Virgo energy. So, typically with someone like this, um, whatever they're doing, it's going to be about you, you know. <laughs> The love making is going to be about you and you feeling good. Very emotional. Nine of Wands. This is in their core value and lifestyle energy. Hmm. Over the Three of Cups. And that's not them fooling around with people. Um, so, you know, with this reading. 
So, boy, they I think they've been really challenged, though, in their career. And I'm trying to think of why. Um, I'm saying they're your person, best person view. I'm not saying they're per they're perfect. They may they may have a tendency to kind of see life through rose colored glasses. I think, um, and hopefully that's something they're trying to get a handle on. You know, you see, you would think like with the sun, which is already of course everything and the brightest object in the sky, we've got the hermit lighting up that moon, that sun energy. But you know why? Because even though it's so bright and it's the sun, you know, I guess that you could kind of say the sun can't see itself, you know. Um, maybe they have a seventh house sun. That's like where you can't see yourself. You need someone else to shine light on you. Um, but it's, they're trying to shine light because uh, with this, it doesn't want to go deep and look at anything that's, and there's always shadow stuff. I mean, congratulations, you had a great childhood. There's always, you know, shadow stuff to, to have to deal with. And that's a lot of times what it means to be kind of rose-colored glasses. And so they may have not made the best decisions. And they may have uh, struggled, as I think they're going to tell you about in their career. Um, and I think what this Three of Cups is saying, you know, Three of Cups is great energy. It's third house energy, Gemini, but it's in terms of emotion. So it's a lot of emotional energy. Uh, wanting to they have a lot of emotional energy anyway and wanting to put it into their career and I think it's like probably there's some kind of caretaker um, they could have uh, they could have they could be like a nurse or a doctor or uh, doing something for other people and I think you know they probably do too much they probably feel like they don't get enough back for what they do it, it feels to me like a classic person that loves too much, you know, and that's kind of the way they're going to be with you, you know, but um, now I personally, nobody's perfect, so, you know, if your fault is that you love too much and get it, you know, it's like on the spiritual path, especially, that's something you, you want to uh, bring into some integration, uh, but there's worse things, you know, and with the right person who appreciates this and reciprocates, um, and then, you know, uh, you can simply point out to them, well, honey, it, it sounds like a great job, but think about it, and da-da-da, and then you break it down logically and show them that they're actually going to be working their ass off for not a great amount of money as it seems like, because they might just be prone to that, you know. Um, But in terms of also the way they are around the house with this Three of Cups, um, it, this kind of this Three of Cups is like this Leo Moon energy. It's not like fooling around anything like that. It's just wanting to be happy. This is kind of the Gemini too, wanting to be happy and uh, everything okay. Um, they may really like to go out in the local neighborhood, go to bars and have fun um, with this Libra Moon and have friends and. Um, I don't think it's like flirty or anything like that, uh, but it's that kind of energy. Um, and, um, you know, maybe they get bad advice there too, can be part of it too, keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so uh, let me know, guys, what you think. I think we've got a lot to go on here. It's a predictive read, so this may not be someone uh, right now that's around you, but it could be any moment. This is the end of November read, so. Do uh, uh, give me a like, thumbs up, uh, tell a friend, tell a friend, and subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell. Do you need all the help I can get? Thank you, guys.